Hello YouTube, D. Badre here. Welcome to EV Components Review. Uh, we are doing a teardown of the FarDriver QS 96530. Uh, if you guys like my channel, please subscribe, uh, like my videos, uh, tell your friends about them, watch my content please. All of that stuff helps my channel to grow. Anyway, uh, yeah, this is the I.O. board and uh, you see all these little black parts. I've mentioned those before in my other video uh, for this control of the overview. And these parts are, are the same kinds of things as well. So these are a special kind of a diode called a TVS. And effectively their job is to take over voltages and to shunt it to ground. So probably those three right there are for the three halls. And so if you have a hull signal that for whatever reason goes like say 20 volts rather than 5 volts, the over voltage gets just pushed over to ground rather than getting into the rest of the electronics where it's going to cause damage. So these little components are basically, um, you know, voltage resetter fuses kind of a thing uh, for over voltage control. So they're protection devices. All right, not much else to really see here. Uh, you know, you can see the little tweeter buzzer thing. I don't know what sounds this controller makes. I've never turned it on yet, but I will after a while. Uh, this is an opto-isolator. I've mentioned these in the past. Uh, essentially, uh, one side of this is a diode, or an LED rather, and the other side is a transistor. And the transistor turns on when exposed to light. Uh, and otherwise it doesn't turn on. So the LED turns on and that turns on the transistor on the side, and then in between there is a gap where electricity cannot flow. Uh, and that's a good thing. So this is an isolation device. Uh, it protects the high voltage side, say like if that's over on this side, from the low voltage stuff on this side. That's pretty much what they're there for. Um, they commonly get used in like CAN bus circuitry, uh, you, you know, or, or like you've got say like a BMS, and you've got several BMS boards that all have to work together. As one, you'll see opto isolators because you're dealing with, you know, fairly high frequency or high voltage stuff and you don't want to have the high voltage stuff jumping across to the other circuitry and blowing it up. So you'll use an opto-isolator. You can see some empty pads right there for a second opto-isolator. What this is for, I don't know, but uh, anyway, it's there. Uh, <clears throat> this is a detail that I don't really like to see. It's usually a good sign of inattention to details. Um, and that is, you've got a couple of through-hole diodes, and then you've got this resistor right next to it. The through-hole diodes I'm not worried about. Uh, it's this added resistor. And it's a, uh, you know, an afterthought or an oopsie that they fixed manually. So you can see this little white component. That might be like a fuse or something. I don't know what it is. Um, and then you've got this resistor going across it over to that leg of this diode. So what you should be doing here is you should be redesigning this board so that that resistor is a little tiny guy like one of these just surface mount of the board rather than in a manual operation that you have to add after the fact. Um, so most likely what happened is they uh, missed a part and then they've been manually fixing it ever since rather than redesigning the board to integrate that resistor as a surface mount component like these little resistors are. Uh, so yeah, this, this is the sort of thing that you commonly see in prototyping work, um, but not in final production products. Not anymore. Back in the 1970s when I first started doing electronics control, you saw that kind of thing all the time, but not so much anymore. In fact, it's pretty darn rare except for in prototypes. You can see all the glossy coating on there. That's the conformal I put on here. All right, uh, let's move on to the logic board. There's nothing else to see on there. And here is that. So the first thing I want to show you is, yeah, is it going to do it? Let's try this one here. Maybe that one will focus better. All right, it's not. <laughs> Maybe it'll figure it out. Um, so this right here is one of the two current sense loops. And this is not like a solid hunk of steel or ferrox or something like that. This is actually um, a coil of flat steel, and it's got insulation coating on both sides of the steel. And it's a wrap. And then um, they glue it all together, and then they cut a slot out of it. And so essentially, yeah, you, it's kind of focusing. Uh, sometimes the camera will focus on stuff like this, and sometimes it won't. It's having a little trouble with depth perception. perception. But uh, as a result, this is many, many thin layers of steel um, all glued together very closely. And the point of that is uh, kind of twofold. So first of all, you'll find the same thing in motors and transformers, uh, lots of things like this that deal with AC. If this was a solid hunk of steel right here, or iron, um, it would get hot uh, because it's exposed to alternating high frequency uh, 
current signals. And so it would get quite warm. Whereas if you make it many thin layers, laminations like this, uh, then what happens is they let go of their magnetic field very quickly, whereas a big hunk of iron or steel does not. And so when you force it to take a reversal in, uh, in magnetic field you know, that it's exposed to, uh, you produce heat in here. And so this would get pretty warm. And also you need this to be very reactive too. So iron likes taking on a magnetic field. It does. And if you had this as a solid hunk of iron, say, um, then it would want to retain some magnetic field and keep it that way. But this is specifically a current loop. And uh, as far as this current loop is concerned, it's seeing high frequency AC all the time. And it needs to be able to send that to this little hall sensor right here. And if this was constantly resisting changing magnetic fields, because it was a solid hunk of iron, well, then this little current sensor, this little hall right here, would not be able to appropriately measure phase current. So this has to be many thin layers uh, of, of steel all wrapped around each other like this, you know, all stacked together like this, in order for them to be reactive and quick and to not produce heat so that this little hall in here can detect the phase current. So anyway, I just thought I'd point that out. I had never talked about what these current loops do before, um, per se, just to talk about them in general. So now you have a little bit more knowledge about what they're doing. All right, uh, since we're here, I'm just talking about this other stuff. So you've got um, right here your three um, MOSFET drivers. So those are the little chips that turn the MOSFETs on and off. And I've talked about that many times. And specifically, those are a uh, part from a company called Uni. It's Chinese. And they are uh, U3215s. Um, they are good for two and a half amps, which probably for a controller like this is probably enough. Um, but uh, yeah, they're good for up to 600 volts. A lot of your MOSFET gate drivers are very high voltage devices like that. Uh, and, and that's fine. That way they have application in a lot of different things. And uh, like this controller here, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, one of the 96 series, so it's effectively a 120 volt max controller. Um, yeah, and so you'd need, you know, <laughs> higher voltage uh, MOSFET gate drivers, among other things. You know, like all the large electrolytics, they're all 120 volt capacitors. And, uh, yeah, that's kind of that. So, over here is your CPU. And that little guy right there, that's a Giga device part. Uh, it's one of the many STM clones. And this is specifically a GD32F303. Uh, it's a little bit more powerful than, say, like the the uh, F103, which is only, what is that, an 80 megahertz chip? This is 120 megahertz. Uh, and so, you know, the slightly better CPU power in here uh, kind of lends me to think that, you know, I well, I know that there's uh, FOC libraries for it, but whether it's being used or not, I don't know about that for sure, but that kind of lends me to believe that this is possibly FOC. Uh, let's see, what else we got to show here? Uh, there is... Not a whole lot more to see. So you can see one of those connectors right there that the little daughter board connects into. And you know, there's another one right there. And there's your third one over here. Uh, this little MOV right here. So this is a metal oxide varistor. Uh, basically what it does is similar to what like a TVS does. And it, it does a breakover thing under certain circumstances. Yeah. Uh, and so it shunts really high voltages down to ground kind of a thing as a protection device. Um, it was standing up and it was potted, and now you can see it's got some silicone underneath it, so I just bent it over and put a little blob of silicone under it so it would be glued down. Uh, that way it could move because, you know, potted, all that stuff was secure, and now that's not potted, you know, it would possibly move around, and now that can't happen. And you can see the same thing for, you know, this cap, uh, the inductor in the middle, and the other cap. So this is your, this is your main DC to DC converter, and right here is the buck chip for it. You can see on there it says U3018. Uh, when I look up that part number, I get a diode, and that's definitely not a diode. That's a buck chip. Uh, yeah, I couldn't find this U3018, so I don't know what the actual voltage is or current or whatever for it. Yeah, it's a, it's a something. <laughs> something buck chip. I've run into that many times where I just can't find a part. Uh, this is a 7805 5-volt uh, linear regulator, and this is providing all the 5 volts for hauls, for throttle, whatever else needs 5 volts, uh, and anything on this board that needs 5 volts. Um, how EBMX did it with dual 5 volt DC to DC regulators? Uh, I am looking to see that on more controllers now that I've seen it once. Uh, that's the first time I've ever seen it. That has raised my expectations for sure. Uh, definitely like that aspect of the EBMX X9000. That's a good thing to have. Uh, this right here, this is the programming port for the CPU. 
And being that this is an ST clone, I should be able to use my ST Link 2, uh, connect it up to there, and to be able to read the firmware off of here. And the reason why I say this is uh, there has been a lot of conversation going on about is Kaomoto a far driver or not. And uh, there are videos that you can go see where people have the Kaomoto software and it is running far driver controllers. So the chances of just an absolute serendipitous accent, accident rather, that far driver controllers can run on the KO Moto software is astronomically small, okay? <laughs> it just is. Uh, that's highly unlikely. And so to have that actually work that way is uh, really leading to the fact that uh, KO Moto, like the rumors have commonly said, is actually an, a far driver development project. And they've just kind of, you know, used all the same software and stuff and put their own pretty front end on it. And uh, in fact, probably Kaomoto didn't even do that much. They probably hired somebody to do it uh, and a few other things. But otherwise, Kaomoto is highly probably um, truly software developed by FarDriver. There's a pretty good chance of that. Uh, the CPU is not the same one. So uh, Kaomoto uses the STM32 F103 and this one is the GD32 F303. I don't know if all far drivers use this Giga device chip or not, but um, that's a fairly small difference. That's simply some libraries that are different to uh, use the one chip or versus the other. Uh, that doesn't really require any new development per se. This is simply, you know, we're going to use this set of of driver software for one chip versus another. Uh, you'll notice right here it says 3.3 or 3v3, that means 3.3 volts, and you got a little test pad, and you've got another one for 5 volts, another one for 14 volts. So that's your, that's your, this is actually a 3 voltage controller. Um, and I said in my previous video, video there was only two. That's because I didn't notice this little part before. Uh, this is a 3.3 volt linear regulator, a really tiny one, but nevertheless, that's what it is and it's providing 3.3 volts for this guy. I really didn't think this was a 5 volt chip, and it's not. <laughs> and here is your 3.3 volt linear regular for it, regulator for it. It's just a really small one. Um, so most likely that little guy is doing nothing other than powering this chip. Uh, yeah, and they went for like the cheapest, smallest part they could get away with, and they did. Um, I can't say that I'm super impressed with Far Driver. Uh, there's a lot of attention to details that are not really super good, uh, yeah, and there's things like this where, you know, they've got, you know, just the absolute smallest parts, stuff like that. Uh, last thing I really want to show you on this board before I flip it over. Uh, so this right here, this is one of your battery minus pads. And you see all these vias around here. Uh, the center portion right here is, there's no circuit trace there. That's just bare circuit board. Uh, so when the screw goes down, it is basically hitting something that won't conduct. But all around it, there is all these vias so that the uh, current from the other side of the board can get all to all of the uh, filtering capacitors. And if I flip it over, there we go. Yeah, so on this side here, you can see there's a full solder pad, and that touches uh, one of the uh, standoffs that's on the uh, power stage. And so you've got current transfer from the bottom side to the top side of the board. So I like seeing these. Uh, that's a good thing. All right, there's not much else to show on the bottom side of this board. I mean, literally, like, nothing. <laughs> I guess I could show you that one little thing right there, and that's about it. So, uh, yeah, uh, this right here is the through holes um, to the uh, pin connector on the other side of the board for uh, one of the six pin headers that comes out from the power stage. Anyway, yeah, over here is the other one of those. Nothing really special about that. Let's move on to the power stage. Get this out of the way. Get this on the board. And there's not a whole lot to see here either. Um, yeah. So the first thing I'm going to point out is here is your one temperature temperature sensor on there. It's a little PTC uh, temperature sensor. Essentially what they are is a temperature reactive resistor, a uh, precision device that um, as the temperature rises or falls, I forget which one it is for PTCs, uh, the resistance changes inside the component. And then that's translated to a temperature for all intents and purposes. Uh, you know, here is your six pin header and uh, basically gate signals are going through here and also, of course, temperature. And that's pretty much all that's happening to a six pin connector. Uh, right here, you can see the little resistors and that's the uh, gate current resistor for the MOSFETs. And uh, like here's the one for that gate and here's the next one for that one. You'll notice this little capacitor in here. Um, this is going from the gate signal to 
um, the phase bus, which is right here. And essentially what that's doing is kind of slowing down the gate drive just a skosh so that, uh, you know, the MOSFETs don't turn on quite as fast as they would otherwise. It's, it's kind of like a little slowing factor, if you will. Um, anyway, because that little capacitor has got to charge up, and that takes a certain amount of time, and then the MOSFETs can turn on or off. Uh, it's, it's just a way to uh, mitigate certain signal control stuff. Uh, on this MOSFET, you can see it says CR Micro, and they are uh, CR SS 043 NN 14s. It's a Chinese MOSFET. Um, and let's see, where is that? There it is. So, yeah, so those are 135 volt, uh, 160 amp, uh, 3.5 milli ohm MOSFETs. So, relatively good. Uh, their internal resistance is fairly low for a 135 volt MOSFET. I've seen worse. Um, definitely like Western parts more, <laughs> not Chinese parts, but hey, this is a Chinese controller and the build quality is not really super good. So the fact that they use Chinese MOSFETs and other things is not really all that surprising. Uh, let's see, probably not really much to see here. That's very interesting. Uh, yeah, here's your copper bridge going from battery minus, you know, over to here and down to here. So this is pretty good. Uh, don't like this copper bridge. Definitely don't like the fact that this battery minus terminal is compromising the battery plus bus which you can now see right here and it's totally not reinforced in any way and it's much thinner this is this is about the same width as what it is on like the uh, KO Moto controllers which uh, I've got evidence of them burning out and I'm sure that can happen here too and of course uh, here is your battery plus uh, terminal coming in and there is no copper here at, at all other, other than the circuit trace but this is about an inch wide um, so, you know, that's better-ish. Still would like to see copper there, you know, like you have down here. Don't know why they didn't. But, uh, yeah, that's not super cool. Uh, the uh, phase buses, so, you you know, I don't like these aluminum standoffs. They have their own issues. I mean, it works well enough, I suppose. But, uh, you know, th this is a cost savings measure rather than using brass or better yet, copper. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it, it works well enough. Anyway, you can see behind here, there's all this circuit trace all the way down there. And that's all your phase bus. And of course, on this side here, you can see all the uh, MOSFETs. They are all basically soldered right next to each other. So this is relatively good as far as the low side is concerned. Um, and the high side is just depending on the circuit trace to be able to get that to this stud right here. Uh, yeah, that could have been better. <laughs> you know, uh, if you look at, like, say, the Vodal, they put copper all, all around those kind of places. And, yeah, here they're just uh, depending on the circuit trace. So this is less good than a Vodal. Uh, it's better than, say, like a Kaomoto, but it's still not uh, really awesome. Anyway, uh, I think that's probably everything I want to show in this video. Um, Far Driver is okay-ish. Uh, it's better than Kaomoto. It's not as good as Vodal, uh, which isn't quite as good as other things. But, uh, yeah, it's it's okay. I mean, it works, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I could uh, go on a while about how I wanted it to be better, but it is what it is.